we're now ready to show what we've been calling the governing property, which is the statement that the determinant being zero is equivalent to the matrix being singular. In other words, when the determinant is zero, the matrix is necessarily singular. And conversely, when the determinant is not zero, then the matrix is necessarily non-singular. So these two statements describe the exact same situation. And once we have both of these statements, we can reverse each one. Namely, when the matrix is singular, the determinant is necessarily zero. And conversely, when the matrix is non-singular, then the determinant is necessarily not zero. So the determinant does indeed give us an effective algebraic criterion for deciding whether a matrix is singular. And we pretty much already have the proof in hand. We just have to dot the i's. The proof is based on the process of Gaussian elimination because Gaussian elimination preserves the correctness of each one of these statements. Let's start with the matrix being singular. We know full well that Gaussian elimination actually preserves the exact null space of the matrix, let alone it's being singular. So I think everything is clear here. What about the determinant being zero? Well, let's review each of the Gaussian elimination operations. Adding a multiple of one row to another leaves the determinant unchanged. Switching two rows changes the sign of the determinant, but not its being zero. Multiplying a row by a number that's not zero. That too is capable of changing the determinant, but not whether or not it's zero. So Gaussian elimination indeed preserves the correctness of each one of these statements. So whatever we find at the end of Gaussian elimination was also true of the original matrix. So let's take a look at what we find at the end of Gaussian elimination. In both cases, whether the matrix is singular or not, we're guaranteed to end up with an upper triangular matrix. But in the case of a non-singular matrix, in other words, one with linearly independent columns, we're guaranteed to have non-zero diagonal entries. Take a moment to remind yourself why that's true. And because for an upper triangular matrix, the determinant equals the product of the diagonal entries, in the non-singular case, the determinant is not zero. What about the singular case? Well, when the matrix is singular, in other words, its columns are linearly dependent, we're sure to encounter a non-pivot column. In this case, it's column three. And the non-pivot column, and all of the subsequent columns for that matter, have zero on the diagonal. And once again, because for an upper triangular matrix, the determinant equals the product of the diagonal entries, when the matrix is singular, the determinant is zero. To recap, at the end of Gaussian elimination, if the matrix is non-singular, then the determinant is not zero. And if the matrix is singular, then the determinant is zero. And if that's true at the end of Gaussian elimination, then it was also true for the original matrix. And that completes the proof.